We need we need to we need to bring our collective intelligence here. Together we might make up 73 IQ and solve this problem. So I have a next tab down here, but I'll, I guess I'll run through the basic basics for this is my tab, but so time to bust out the paint. I could do some paint action. Yeah, we can do some paint action. I'll get I'll get the paint up. It'll be good, right? Paint is very useful. Yeah, so this is this is how next works, right? Basically, you've got this big room like that, and then you've got a corner over here, a corner over here, a corner over here, a corner over here, and then you have a big pathway thing leading to the center, and then next is here, and she's got wings, I think, and then everyone is over here, and you shoot with your twisted bows, and then you get loot. This is meant to be a stack of coins. It's not very good though. That's next. That's the stream. Goodbye, guys. You happy now? Beautiful? Yeah. Panic by Tivo? Yeah, that's the fight. Just sh shoot the boss. I don't know why I have coins in here, but uh. Okay. Right, let's run through some stuff. So. Basically, the, the whole rundown is Nyx is the new God Wars boss, the fifth general. Uh, but while it is based in God Wars, it's not going to be as easy as the other God Wars bosses. So it's going to be a bit more of an interesting or a bit more of a complex fight. Uh, it's going to have phases, most likely. And of course, Nyx was in RS3, or uh, Nyx was in RS2, RS3 now. So we know some things about what we are going to expect and therefore we know roughly how to gear for it plus we've kind of wisened up wisened up in the last few years <laughs> but um let me have got my notes actually i made notes for this i actually made this so if you want to do next tomorrow the first thing you should be doing is getting the frozen key i don't know if there's a i don't know if there's like a mini quest for this right there should be a mini quest now so if you want to do next the first thing you got to do is go and do the frozen door which is basically kill every single god wars boss one time Get the key, make it, and go and unlock Nex. I guess we can also go to Nex for the sake of it. There it is, over here. Okay, so it's straight up south. Run! Zero armor, confirmed not needed for getting into Nex. You can do a little bit about a detached cam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, all, this is the room we, we know so far. Look at it! Mm. We're going to be passing through that barrier tomorrow. That's the money barrier, that is. So I think, I think, that's the forge as well to make stuff, but... As far as actually getting into this bit here, this frozen door, this entrance here, you got to get the key. So kill every god or boss once. I'm sure there's like a million guys out at this point, but if you if you plan on doing next tomorrow, do this now, otherwise you're going to be late. You're not going to get there early. Uh, in terms of actually getting through, once you're through there, you actually do need KC to get into Nex. So killing these fellas for 40 KC, uh, as you can see here top right on the essence thing, you have to kill ancient stuff now. So it's the same as God Wars in terms of the mechanic of getting in there. Uh, but you can also use an ecumenical key. So once you're through this door here, which is the entrance, I guess, like all the other God Wars things, you're fine. You can, there, there will now be a bank here, as far as I'm aware. So we have a look at minimap. Yeah, so the bank is going to be there. So once you're done getting KC, for whatever reason it might be difficult or you know it might take some time, you can resupply and go to next. Now, help us out here fellas. I don't think if you enter next room, I don't think you can exit back out to the bank per kill. I'm pretty sure you would have to stay in the room. Otherwise, there's no reason for there to be an altar here. There's no reason for there to be an altar here mid kill. So, after you resupply from the Ancient Prison area getting KC, you can either get KC and resupply, or you can just donk an AQ key and run straight in. But once you're into next room, you're in there until, you know, as many KC as you want to do until you TP out. A bit like God Wars. So, it's nice the bank's there, but this isn't going to be like a resupply thing between kills. I think what we're going to be doing in terms of playing for GP is going to be going for multiple kills an hour. Like, obviously, obviously. I'm gonna get some nice detached camera work going. Lovely. I think these guys actually will be spawning during the fight. 
And they're relatively high level, 174 as well. Everything here is really high level compared to uh, other places in God Wars. A lot of the minions, are, I mean, obviously we have like imps and stuff, right? But all of these guys are like level 150 plus. 158, 158, 174. So I think getting keys, getting Casey here is going to be a lot more difficult. Thus, getting EQ keys is relevant. Reaver's first NPC to move slower than one tile a tick. Ooh. Oh, yeah, look at that. Hang on, so if we mark that... And if we mark individual tiles around it, that's really cool. Wait, so it's got a half tile movement. That is so weird. That's really cool. Huh. Oh. That's interesting. I guess I may as well mark these because they're going to be, these guys might be present during the fight, so I'll give them a tag. That's very cool. Intro turn true tile on? Uh, I, I can do. NPC indicators, true tile. This is interesting. Wait, what on earth? Oh no, yeah. Yeah, it's like one tile every two takes. That's so interesting. Oh, look at that. Next can run? Oh god. I think we kind of figured next can run. That's very interesting. Perfect. Getting leaks. So, next is Zaros based, which means actually I'm, I'm gonna get out of here so I can show my GE, because this is where we get this is where we get into gearing now. But next is Zaros based, so if you're getting KC, you you may want to have a Zaros item to prevent yourself from getting absolutely demolished. So we have a we have a few choices here. Like anything ancient is fine, and you can have ancient dehyde, you can have ancient uh, blessing, you can have all sorts of things. So I don't think I have anything ancient except for book of darkness. So you could have like a book of darkness on if you don't want to be aggro. I don't know if things are just aggro on you anyway, but they may just be aggro. But the one thing that I have my money on as far as being useful in terms of getting KC for those who don't want EQ keys is Ancient Braces. So... I have a few of them. I, I wanted to get more, but there's a buy limit of 8 on these. And anyway, I, I don't know. I'd assume that if people want to get KC and they don't have EQ keys, just grab one pair of Ancient Braces. They're not exactly expensive right now. Nor will they go up to a price that is anything over like 500k. So, they're a pretty good option if you just want to have like a, Zamia, uh, a Zaros item. But there's, there's plenty of ancient stuff, so... Whether you want to get like the Dehyde or the Vambraces, whatever, makes no difference. Right, actually on to next. I wonder if I can bring up Gnome Monkey's video. I can show a little bit, right? I don't want to like yoink it entirely, but... This is a, this is a fantastic... So I won't, I won't show the whole thing, but if you haven't seen this already... This video by No Monkey is, I think, one of the best sources of information that we have seen for Nex. So, again, this is all prediction stuff. We don't really know what's going on. We're just making predictions based on how it was and what we think is going to go on. But if you haven't seen this video in particular, I'd strongly recommend checking it out. Because it gives you a bit of an overview of, of the rough fight. So this is, all, this is all old footage, but it does explain like the rough phases and shows you the layout and what it does. Even shit like that is like the nightmare, uh, the nightmare dash. The interesting thing is that nightmare, sorry, next is kind of, well, nightmare is kind of based around next to some degree, and a lot of the, a lot of the inter interactions and mechanics from next show up in different places. Like, Olm burn with me is very similar to an old next mechanics. This cough thing is like that, same as the shrooms at nightmare. But it's, it's not like a complete copy paste, but it's very similar. Anyway, this video is like super amazing. Link is in chat if you want. So, actual Nex mechanics. Nex, old Nex, had Shadow, Blood, Ice phase, and then, so it had four phases, I think. Shadow phase, Blood phase, Ice phase, and Turmoil slash Soul Split phase. And guys, please correct me if I'm talking shit, because I don't really know, but... Of these four phases, I think the one that's going to cause the most issue is five with Zara's. Okay, sure. Smoke, Shadow, Blood, and Ice. I forgot. Smoke. I forgot smoke phase. I um, so so the each phase is uh each phase is based off of ancient spellbook, right? So I think I'm on ancients now. So each of these let me get the runes out. 
Each phase is based off a different spell from the ancient spellbook. Yeah. But the one that's going to cause us the most problem out of everything, assuming we get it, is going to be blood phase. So whether or not... So normally Nex attacks with blood blitz or blood burst. But either way, that's going to be a healing mechanic. Um, so at least in, in the mess state, in the mess rooms on the first few days, if it decides to attack everyone, we need to do some hella DPS. Which is just one thing to keep in mind in terms of bursting it down at the right time and stuff. But that's the first phase that's going to cause major issue. The others are, you know, they don't really care about it, you just click it. Is off Siphon Autos? Never mind. Sure, but the blood phase is, the, is a healing phase, right? It doesn't heal on other phases. So that's a that's a spec dump phase, so claws or chally or pretty much anything to just help take it down on that phase will be very, very relevant. And then the final phase is like the Zaros, sorry, Zaros phase or the, the Soul Split phase. And there's a really a very interesting thing that was shown not too long ago. Here it is. Tell it from the wiki. This was shown. On the 28th of December. This guy is uh, one of the fellas who does the wiki stuff. But he showed that these were added during the Christmas update. And this isn't a troll post as far as I'm aware. Um, and these are prayers which we kind of seen before. And if you played old old school then you would have seen them before. But this is like just classic deflex for multiple styles. This thing is like a giant bomb that was initiated when Nex died. So whenever Nex died there was like an AoE around her. Where if you stood next to her you got donked. That's obviously Soul Split. And these Deflect Prayers with the blue means that if you attack during this, you are... I don't know if it reduces all the damage, but it will also deflect damage back on you. So it's a bit like Nylocas. If you attack like wrong style, you're going to get a bit hit. And this is one of the reasons that because this is added, we're assuming that some of these prayers are used either on Nex or on some of the bodyguards or things in the area. It could be bait, but assuming they added it, it's probably going to be used. But... The main, thing, the main takeaway from this is that just because Nex is a range boss doesn't mean that you'll be able to range it for the entire time. And it's worth noting that at this place here, there's a melee and range pro, which means magic might even be the best option. And I don't think I've seen any setups currently that make use of magic, so it's just food for thought. I don't think it'll be a heavy magic based fight, but given that prayer's in the game, you never know. Food for thought. But interesting nonetheless. Harm this. It could be that we need a tribrid setup, which would be very interesting if they've if they've gone that route. People keep saying next is stupid magic. I don't think we know what it has. I would love to see like an actual uh, tweet or something where we can see this. See this. I'm gonna be really sad if harm is good on some phase because yeah, I sold my harm for other things. Right. As far as other mechanics, no mechanic to reduce weapon damage was apparently said by Husky on livestream. Supposedly. I don't have a source for this, but it's what, I, it's what I've heard. So if there's no mechanic for reducing weapon damage, if it has high magic level, Tebow simply will be good. That's just how it will be. Unless it has absurd range defense, Tebow will be good if it has high magic uh, level, whatever it is. He said, there is no mechanic to reduce weapon damage. Now that could be bait as well, because there could be a there could be mechanics to increase weapon damage instead. So it, it doesn't really say too much. It just means that Tebow might necessarily not be too bad. Not crossbows. Okay, I see clip. I click. Um, the question is, I'm a little trouble understanding the bit about Nex being weak to crossbows. Does this mean something similar to Corp, where we're like enforcing crossbows only and that sort of stuff? Uh, the answer is no, right? Um, we've done obviously some damage calculations and weighed up different range weapons uh, against each other. Um, I think the big one is, uh, like, obviously we can control the magic level for Tebow and things like that. But I think the biggest reason why crossbows can shine in content and why crossbows are going to be meta than this, this is about the uh, shield rate. Even if something is, like, slightly higher DPS potentially, I don't quite know where the numbers sit. But having shields is going to be really, really strong here, right? Um, Ooh. And that's okay, kind that of was the shield thing. Um, the question is, I'm gonna... sure. So that was about the shield stuff. So. Tebow could still be useful, it's just that he's clearly emphasized that shields are good. But we knew this for a long time. That was the second part, so... On to why shields could be good. Now this is like one of the biggest talking points I guess about Nex. If not the biggest talking point, but 
the question is which shield is good and why. So this is like worth this is probably worth going into to to some level, I guess. I'm trying to think of all the shields that are relevant in the game, and I think I have them in my inventory. Like of all the shields that you could possibly bring to Nex, these six are the ones that might be good. Now I'ma go and I'ma go and straight like just discount a couple of these shields directly. So arcane won't be useful. It just won't be useful. It's getting put down here. We can make a tier list, right? So, in terms of what we expect to be good, Arcane won't be useful. It is pure, just like, magic bonus, and it's and like, a crystal shield is actually better than Arcane in terms of raw defense. Um, but I ha this, this is the bit that just gets me, is like, there is no way on Earth, there's no way on Earth that Husky would say that shields are useful from a defense standpoint. We just, there's no way it is useful from a purely defense standpoint. Now, shields do give a lot of defense. <laughs> But, I mean, just look at this for example. I'm pretty sure that if you took like one Bandos chestplate, if you were ranging or something, you're going to get similar defenses. So, a BCP is plus 133 range death. A Crystal Shield is arguably not as much. Yeah, it's 80 range death. So if we're talking from a purely defensive standpoint, it just makes no sense. The shield has to have an effect. So the question is, what is the effect of the shield? So by, we can start by discounting shields that give pure defense. So these are all gone. Bulwark is also gone. Bulwark isn't just, it just isn't good. Which means we're, left with, we're only left with four shields that can be good here. So the question is, is it Buckler? Is it a damage shield or is it one of these other shields? You've only got two options here. So what does Buckler and Ward do? Buckler and Ward basically do the same thing, right? But they're giving range strength. So Buckler's plus 10, Ward is plus 8. Ward has slightly better defensive bonuses, but if we're going from a purely offensive standpoint, again, defense shouldn't matter. Buckler's going to be the choice, so we can discount Ward now. So now we're down to three shields. Three potential shields for being good. Um, I personally do not think that Buckler will, will matter very much. And this is where we get down to unique mechanics. So unique mechanics at next include, again, Blood Phase and Soul Split Phase. So Soul Split... Uh, I need some help here, guys, because I'm not too sure about it. But Soul Split is basically, it drains the fuck out of your stats. And also, Smoke Phase will probably do the same thing. Smoke Phase or Shadow Phase, I guess both of them might drain stats on their own. So, Soul Split heal you some of this point. I thought it drained prayer points as well, or drained some aspect of your, your stats. Smite that heals you. Right, okay. So the point is we're draining stats, and the question is which stats are we draining? If it is an HP drain, then obviously Elysian is better, right? Turmoil drains? Okay. Also it's like lifesteal. So if it's an HP drain mechanic, Ellie just probably wins. Or if it's like a hella gigantic damage thing, Ellie probably wins. But, I don't know. I, I can't see them making Ellie good. I can't see them making Ellie good. It's already like super strong just everywhere. Um, but it is down to it is down to interactions. There's, it's not these shields. We can just put these away. It's not these shields. It will never be these shields. It's down to these three. But it depends. It depends on many things. Like who does next attack? Does she attack one person or does she attack everyone? I don't think they're going to make it so simple as to to tank one target. I think it's more likely going to be like Nightmare, where she might aggro one target primarily, but the reality is she's actually going to be hitting a lot more people with the attacks. So. Nex used to like do something relatively similar where it would it would run around and actually melee one person in particular. A bit like Nightmare. But that melee could be AoE or the attacks that come out could be based on it. It could be anything like this. I'm curious what the prices are of these right now. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So Ellie Ellie's gone over a bill again. Buckler's sitting pretty at 25, and Spectral is kind of going up again to about hundred. It's kind of ridiculous though. So my money is not on Buckler. I think there's a place for it at Nex, but that would assume that crossbowing is going to be your main source of damage. And Wooks thinks Wooks said yesterday that Bofa is going to be good, so we can actually look at weapons combined with we can look at weapons combined with uh, this now. So we'll do ranged weapons first, but we can look at other stuff later. So the choices are really uh, this, I guess. Of the, of the ranged weapons you can take, these are kind of your choices. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna, I'm gonna discount Dragon Crossbow as the same as an Armadillo Crossbow. 
And by the way, if you're planning on doing next and you don't have the GB, buy a Dragon Crossbow. It's incredibly cheap and it's going to be the same thing as an Armadillo Crossbow. It's 2 mil right now. Super cheap. So if in doubt, just buy one if you're planning on doing next. I like how Armadillo Crossbow has dropped a lot. So let's separate these out. So Twisted Bow, Blowpipe, and uh, Bofa. These are one-handed weapons. You can't use a shield with it. These guys, it's really your only choices right now as to as to having two-handed weapons. Important thing is bolts. Well, don't think so. But the one thing you can do, and this is uh, something we do occasionally for different bits of content, is if you've ever seen like KBD, you can Tebow a KBD, but of course you take magic damage or you take dragon fire damage, so you have to flick. In the case of in the case of KBD, you would flick to your shield every hit. Which is kind of not a mechanic that I like a lot, but it could end up being a thing at next. So if Tebow happens to be like incredibly good DPS, the play might be hold on to a Tebow, click boss, flick to Ellie, wait for the attack cooldown, click Tebow, click boss, etc. Right? And the same could be true for using a Bofa. If it's better for tick speed, it could be if Nex is like 5 tick or if Nex is 4 tick, that'll affect it. All this kind of thing, so... Click boss, click shield, click boss, click shield. This could be a thing for some phases. Uh, it's not likely to be a thing for all phases, but some phases maybe. So some, some of the setups we can look at for mass raids may include multiple shields or a variety. It could be that you want to have DPS for one phase, so you have Armadillo Crossbow and Buckler. And then for another phase, you're like, oh shit, I need to actually have like my prayer my, my prayer is getting drained, so you put on spectral. So it might be a it might be a multi-shield thing. There might be no right answer. It could be all the shields are good. Uh, or likewise, it could be I could use Buckler for the main thing if I want. Or you could use like you could use this if you want to actually have prevent and drain, and then you could just go straight up like, okay, press Tebow with Ellie. It could be something like this, it could be anything. But this is just food for thought. My personal guess is that Spectral is going to be good. And if it's not obvious, yes, I have Spectrals. I have 15 of them. So my money is literally where my mouth is on this one, and I'm pretty sure it'll it'll uh, it'll be good. The last thing to look at as far as like when shields will be good and when it's worth buying them is... In a mass next, it's more likely that you're not going to be targeted directly if there's like targeting mechanics, right? So I have a feeling, I have a feeling that on day one, Spectral will not be as good as it will be on subsequent days following that. So to put this simply, if you are soloing next, you're going to be targeted every time by the ship by the attack that drains your stats. Assuming it does like a single person target or something. So you want this shield on permanently, otherwise you're getting drained forever, right? But if you're in a mass raid and it's only targeting one or two people, I can just camp the buckler and get massive damage, or just camp the Tebow. In other words, the earlier on as the earlier on in the next release, the more likely it is that Spectral will not actually be very good, or Ellie will not actually be good, and Buckler will reign supreme for the day one. Or Ellie. But Ellie or Buckler will reign supreme for day one. Just most likely. And then Spectral, as teams get smaller, as people decide I want to do some solos, or I want to do some four and five mans, Spectral might become more useful as you're targeted more. That's the general gist of like shields and weapons and stuff. So everything in the everything in the inventory right now is probably gonna be finding some use or some potential. That's it really. What else we got? Melee stuff. So, because we had a look at some of the prayers, um, there's a variety of melee weapons you could choose. Now, the obvious one that we're going to be bringing is claws. If you don't have a pair of claws, get them now. Claws are just going to be very good. Uh, there's going to be a blood phase. There's probably going to be healing of some sort, and we're probably going to want to burst down the boss or minions at some point. So, claws are the best option. Chally is possible to be good, but claws are just going to be better. Claws are always the best choice. They're just very, very, very strong. But, of course, they've also gone up in price a hell of a lot, so... I'm gonna actually try and gear up in a... I had a, I had a rough setup that... This was just my expectation of what the setup would be. So... I don't really know how to gear for this, but... We'll have a look at some example setups. I guess... Ancient Braces for day one... I suppose they're fine. It's prayer bonus. You're going to be doing long fights, so 
between bee gloves and braces bee gloves will be better but for kill number one i think i want to have ancient braces on just in terms of getting there and then if you want to once you're there you can swap out to bee gloves because you have the chest nearby so just wear these and then switch out it can be any item right but so you'll have those and then you'll go on to bee gloves Melee weapon wise, we have two choices that are relevant. We uh, outside of the spec weapon being claws, mace and rapier, right? Are the two spec weapons or the two melee weapons? So rapier is the pretty standard choice, but mace may end up being better because it's got more of a crush bonus style and still has good stab bonus. You could bring up warhammer, but. I would be surprised if it matters a lot on day one. There are going to be players out there who don't have claws and are going to be bringing Warhammer and BGS. There are just going to be players out there. There's going to be players out there. Hasta for Stab and Crush? Sure, if you if you don't have the me, I reckon you could bring a Hasta. I think the Mace is still the best option. It also has pr plus one prayer bonus. Oh, actually, plus two prayer bonus. So you get a bit more player, uh, prayer bonus out of the Mace as well for what it's worth. But we need to have some melee weapons. So the, the key items here is have bee gloves if you can if you can get them, have defender and have mace. That's kind of it really. I think I'll be banking the rapier. Mace is just gonna be better. Go in here, mace. I guess I'll keep the warhammer in as well. Goodbye, rapier. It was nice having you. Melee for what? So there, there are minions there, and there are also prayers, which mean that next might not be susceptible to range or mage. So, mace. As far as other gear, uh, Crystal Helmet is an interesting choice here. Other people have been buying Justy Helm, but I, I can't say that Justy is going to be any good. I think the only relevant choices is, right now are these four helmets, right? So we got Armadillo Helmet, which is obviously like not a bad choice. It'll never be a bad choice. Uh, Face Guard will never be a bad choice either. It's got good prayer bonus, and it's also very, very, very good for melee. And then Justy is just all around bad. I know people have been buying this, and the Justy helmet is ridiculously expensive right now, but it's just. There's no way Justy's good. Sell this right now. It's just not worth it. It won't be it won't be a defense-based game. It'll be like a pray correctly and do the right thing game. Especially in smaller teams. This is just the wrong thing to buy. And if we have a look at defense bonuses. Uh, if we're looking for mage defense, because we know next will mage you or something will mage you. Range 204 from this thing and Magic 128 versus Crystal, Magic 144, and the range probably doesn't matter too much. Sup? Uh, we don't need Sup, uh, we don't need Sup because what we're going to be doing is taking Sandfuse. So if you haven't seen Sandfuse before, Sandfuse are basically just restores and uh, anti-poison together. So you'll be bringing these along to the first day of things, and these are also stupid. Everything is stupid expensive right now, 35k at Sandfuse. But bring some of these things. Crystal Body or Carol over Crystal Body. I don't know how big the difference is on these two. You could just bring Crystal Body. I think you have slightly, slightly less defense. It's incredibly similar. Carol's is going to give you more magic defense, which is why I think it'll be a bit better. Um, but then again, if the Bofor tends to be a good item, then obviously wear Crystal. So, personally, I'm not going to be bringing Bofor to the first kill. I don't think it'll be as good as Tebow. Or I think that it'll be better to just crossbow it. I don't really want to flick boss too much, so I'm gonna be bring, I'll be bringing Carol's for first kill, and then depending on how people with both are saying it's going, I will then switch to Crystal Body if needed. So it's one of those like keep it in mind things, but don't necessarily don't necessarily bring it. I guess I'll keep the uh, face guard in here as well. Face guard potentially quite good as well. What else we got? Oh, yeah, I guess we need Bolt Switch as well. Oh, dude, the Bolt Switch is going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, heart is more of a pre-part. I wouldn't actually bring Heart to this. I'm going to put that down there for now. Bones to Peaches. This is probably a good item as well. I recommend getting some Bones to Peaches. I don't think what else we really need here. The rest is just like runes and stuff. Max Cape, probably not a play either. I'm going to put these two in. Because there tends to be a large amount of melee going on, I think it would not be unwise to bring a to bring an Infernal Cape switch. I would say Infernal Cape is, is likely to be half decent. 
I guess Berserker Ring as well. Berserker Ring as well. I've seen a lot of setups from a lot of people that say that Berserker Ring is going to be quite good in terms of a switch. I just can't help but feel that based on the length of the kills and the fact that you're trying to maximize the amount of time you're in the room for, it might be better to bring even a Ring of the Gods just to maximize the kills because you are going to be primarily ranging, but as a rule of thumb, Archer's Ring just only gives accuracy and therefore isn't good, right? So there are, there, are, there are three rings which are viable here. Ring of the Gods for extended trips is just going to be better. Berserker Ring if you really need the melee damage. Suffering for first kill is standard. I think that's fine with that. Nothing wrong with that. What about Blood Fury? Only minus one makes it. Blood Fury is only going to be relevant for you if you're able to get enough melee damage to heal effectively. So across the whole fight, if we can dump claws maybe three times and we have to melee one or two minions and a couple of hits on next, you might gain 20 to 30 HP, but we expect it to be a range heavy fight. So because of that, I don't think Blood Fury is worth it. You could bring it as a switch, um, but I would never bring it as like a camping item. So sure, if you if you really want to have like a strong melee switch, you could do something like this. I guess I need my assembler on. Assembler, come here. I need a thing. So yeah, a very, very, very strong melee switch would look something like this. Spec weapon of claws and a four way, like that. Oh, I guess, and uh, I need buckler or Elliot spectrum. So if you're bringing a melee and you really think melee is good, or if we know melee is good, you'll bring a five way like this. I'd say the cape. Uh, I'd say the cape is pretty optional here. Uh, Berserker ring. I don't think it's good as blood fury. This is like very similar here, but there are options here. Uh, the answer for no scythe is because the next is 2x2. Two two. I don't know if it's 2x2 two two in RS in old school, but based on the previews of the animation of next running and stuff, it looks like a 2x2. Two two. It doesn't look very big. She is 3x3? Three three? I don't know. Uh, so, sure. If it's 3x3, three three, scythe. If it's 2x2, two two, no scythe. But it also depends how much we're actually going to be hitting next with melee. I don't think we're hitting it a lot. It says 3x3. Three three. Okay, so scythe maybe, but unlikely. We know it's a range heavy fight. Scythe is also one. Scythe, Scythe, is, all, Scythe is also two handed, so. I don't think Scythe will be play. I don't think it'll be the play. What else you got to have a look at? Hmm. Own drops and PV, MV, PvP MVP mechanics. So, drop wise, the. Uh... Arcane today said that Nex is a static loot system. So if you're doing large groups, you are going to have very fast kills, a bit like Nightmare, but there's no scaling. So you're not, you're not more likely to get a drop in a large raid like Chambers, you're not getting more points for the kill. Which means in order for it to be worthwhile, let's say, let's say that for whatever reason, five man is optimal. However long it takes to kill Nightmare divided by five is like your time, time to kill. We're looking at a time to kill per person. And if the time to kill per person in a mass raid is not is not as good as the optimal, let's say five man again, you would not want to do mass raids. And likewise, if the time to kill per person in solo isn't optimal, it doesn't matter. So that, that's the main thing we're looking at, is, is time to kill per person. And then looters do whatever. And yeah, so next doesn't scale is the last thing. It doesn't scale at all, it's just a static boss like Dog Wars. I think that's everything I had on my list as far as like, what to do. I guess I'll craft the setup that I think I'll be using tomorrow. Then we can talk a bit about, a bit about like the best way to approach next in terms of finding teams and uh, going around that. So I think for me personally, I'll have a think about switching to Crystal Body if Bofa is good, but for now, I want Mason Defender as my melee switch. I want to have a reduced melee because I want to have a lot of supplies. I want to outlast the noobs dying. Um, because Nex is static, the more th if you survive Nex and people die around you, you're still getting a good chance of loot. If anything, the more people that die on, on day one, the better. So, nice. Uh, I will be bringing Thralls. This is, sorry, I didn't touch on this, but Thralls will be very good. I'm not going to bring Death Charge because it's not going to give that much throughout a kill, but definitely, definitely Thralls. Let me switch to Thralls, actually. So Thrall Book, Blood, Fire, Cosmic. I literally just removed Blood, Fire, Cosmic, didn't I? Blood, Cosmic, 
fire. Trolls will be good. Trolls are good everywhere. Uh, vengeance might be okay, but thralls are better, better long term than vengeance always. Pretty much always, as long as they're always attacking. And because Nexus is a very long fight, thralls will be very, very, very good. They would reduce your time in the room by a lot of prayer. Uh, yes and no. I think that'd be worth it. If everyone is thralling, you are using prayer, but it's not like a crazy amount. But I'd rather have I'd rather have the thrall uh, for first GKC and see how it goes. We can always adjust it, but the point is you have to be on one spell book, so you may as well have something just to help out with the fight. So EQ key for actually entering, and then after you enter, you won't need this. So assuming we're going into the next fight, this is what I'll bring. Get rid of all of this. Ring of the Gods, that'll be for later kills. Crystal Body for later kills. Uh, I will not be bringing Ellie. I will be bringing something like this. So we'll go in with a crossbow equipped. Uh, kill all this. Hammer can go goodbye. Put these down here. Bones to features I'm not taking for first kill. This is like irrelevant. Some sweets will be good. Just for some run energy. Uh, because Nex can aggro you, I think it's worthwhile to be able to be able to be able to run around, so sure. One stam is probably a nice idea. We know it's a range heavy room, so we want one divine, if not two divines. I'm gonna think I'll bring two. And because your stats are gonna be drained, I'm gonna be bringing extra potions to top up once I brew down, because you're probably gonna brew down. So two divines, that's enough for uh maybe three or four kills easily. Bastion pots as well. We're going to be doing some melee, so I'm going to have a super combat next to my claws. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, which leaves us with bruises, and supplies and things. Sure, so... Let's have a think. I want to make this look pretty. I never know how to do my gear and, and stuff like this. I guess this can, this can go down here. I'm going to build it like an inferno setup. Something six brews and the rest sand fuse. Maybe one angler so I can switch between things. Sure, that looks pretty good. Something like this. Any uh, any ideas of what to bring else other than this, fellas? I'd say I'd say that's pretty pretty sad, pretty pretty much fine. One bolt type. I don't really fancy bringing bolt pouch. You could do. Your telly there. Well, no, there's a bank right outside. So after after like gearing up at the bank, this is what I'll be bringing like directly in. Six brews. Fine, we'll take seven brews. Okay, how about that? So that is my day one setup. Oh, no, hang on, it's not my day one setup. Aha! I have a secret item that I think is also incredibly strong. That is my day one setup. I forgot to mention Guardian Boots, and yes, I have some in the G because I think they're really fucking good. Guardian Boots are very, very, very... What is that? Excuse me. That's bait. I'm not, I'm not falling for it. This is the setup. I think Guardian Boots are going to be pretty much best for day one. Reg like very strong all round defense, prayer bonus, which is relevant, and then also uh, good melee melee attack bonus. So that's my setup for day one. So there's plenty of interchangeable things here. The biggest the biggest obvious one is like if you don't own a twisted bow or a bofa, and it's kind of like up to you if you want to go for one or the other. But I would pretty much just bring a dragon crossbow and like a buckler or any shield. Yeah. Carols for a bit more defense. If Bofa is good, I will get rid of the Tebow and then I will take Bofa and take a crystal top. How about devout boots? Uh, Pegasian devout boots. These are all fine. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Is there a damage cap? We don't know. Or I don't know. But that is my that is my patented day one setup. No rubies sus. Rubies might be good, but I don't really want to have my HP be drained too hard. I'd rather take the first kill slow and then go from there. I'm sure rubies will be good. I'm sure will be, rubies will be good, especially if there's no damage cap. Would max hit be better if since you're 112 from Divine? Uh, not really. Wook said yesterday the max hit cap is 50. Really? Maybe, maybe, yeah, that was that was an RS3, but I, I don't think there's a damage cap for Oz School. So there's a good chance that uh, it won't be. No sign. Need a telly out? Uh, I do need a telly out, yeah. <laughs> I guess you could you could take a max cape if you really want a telly out, but after the end of a kill, you can just uh, use a home teleport or something, so... 
It's not really the biggest issue. Thrallbook. Oh yeah, Thrallbook is a telly. That's true. Damage cap is only in the last phase. Right. But this is what I'm using. Setup looks cute. Don't say that now. Come on, man. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I get it. All right, that's what I that's what I reckon for day one. Now this is a like this is a this is a setup for I'm going into the I'm going into the next with the mentality that on every single world there is going to be a packed world of eighty people. That's what this setup is for. I think that once we get a bit better at next and we understand the mechanics, there's probably some other things we can do. So sure, I'm willing to I'm willing to bet that. Crystal probably is better. It's like, you, if you don't need the defense and you know what's going on, sure. Um, things we could do to make this better long term, I guess Pegasian once things die down? I don't know actually, maybe Pegasian are better on day one and then Brint and then Guardian becomes better on like the days following in lower scale for more defense. You know what, I reckon Guardian is just better. This isn't because I have a lot I'm trying to sell them, I genuinely think Guardian is the play. You'll see me wearing this tomorrow. So. The only the only major changes to this is if we need to have a mage weapon, you will take a Sang Staff and an Occult, and probably not anything else, but at least those two items. And then I suppose you could take a Buckler if you're crossbowing, if you want the DPS, or an Ellie if Ellie turns out to be good. What about Heart? Yeah, I mean, I think we have to limit inventory space to not have too many crazy switches. At the end of the day, it's like you need to have a balance between how many supplies you're bringing in and how much, uh, how many items you need. The so sand could be good if there's like a lot of maging to do, but it <laughs> it could be that if there's a mage phase and you just need to mage, we just dip out the first kill and we just go back on the second kill. Just go straight back in because there's, there's no reason to there's no reason to like necessarily think we'll get a KC first time. If there's mechanics that just make it too difficult, then screw it. Leave and come back the next time. So I don't know. This is what this is what I'm bringing. I reckon this is the plan. How do I know this? Just speculation. Uh, there's a lot of <laughs> thanks in part. There's a lot of speculation, and we know some stuff because Nyx came out in RS in old school, old school like RS two, RS three. But we know enough about PPM these days to understand like what is what is generally quite good. But yeah, it's all speculation. Nothing nothing here is like... We got some confirmed things, but only some. Not armor. Armor can be good as well, but if Bofa turns out, if Bofa turns out to be better than a crystal, it's interchangeable. The good news with armor, the good news with a crystal helmet is that it's got good defense. The actual body and legs, sure, this could be armadil or carols, it's completely fine. No buckler because I think that spectral is going to be a bit better. Early on, anyway. But yeah, this is uh, that's my day one setup. Oh, sorry, hang on. Well, I will. Yeah, if I uh, I'll bring Carol's top for day one, or kill one. That's my setup. The legs don't really matter too much. I just want a bit more mage defense. So we got pretty standard all round bonuses. Negative magic, but we don't plan on attacking with magic. Sure. One angler to eat so we can switch to Tebow. Yeah. I said Buckler will be good now on Spectral. They can both be good. Buckler's damage and Spectral is like an effect, so we don't know which one's going to be better, but it doesn't hurt to have both. My money is on Spectral being the most useful shield. The most useful shield. Um, but in particular, after a couple of days, then it will be good. Anti-poison, we don't have to because Sanfu is an anti-poison, so we're fine. But, yeah. That's it, really. There's no right answer. I suggest building a setup for yourself and having an idea. Such a long-winded march. At least I'm open about it. I'm just waiting for that first one to sell. I've got these in for 245, so... I sold everything for this man, I sold everything. So I'm hoping to make some money, but... It's too late to change the mechanics now! Can only hope. Can 
gonna bring XP key. This this setup is for going into Nex, but you can get to a bank chest before you go there. So I'll have a setup with like ancient braces and an XP key to go in there, and then I'll switch to this gear. Um, that's it. That's all I got. If you guys have any other ideas, now's the time to let everyone know. We can get some collective info. Try and work some more stuff out. No, no shot someone said chin next. I've got a lot of chins. I wouldn't mind the price going up. We know there's a bank because we can see the bank there. Think of rapier versus ink mace. Mace is going to be better than rapier, for sure. Unless they are weak to stab, but there's no guarantee they're weak to any particular style, so take a mace. Mace is better overall. But yes, yeah, so I think that's, uh, that's it. Release time, I believe, is 11.30 a.m. GMT plus zero. So I would recommend being up at around 10 a.m. GMT if you plan on going to next on release. So relatively early UK time. Look at the gear you share. That's Impart, I know, he's fucking baiting. Absolute rat. Does the next start with an overhead prayer? It can do. I don't know. So everything that I've said is all that I know. And I tend to know very little, but this is my speculation. So whatever you do, don't listen to my advice, basically. Take it with a very, very large grain of salt. But I, yeah, the main thing is that I recommend building your own setup and having an idea of what you want to bring in. And uh, don't just stick with it. Don't stick with a static setup. Have a feel, have a feel about, and actually uh, craft something useful. So, like, I guess I can, I guess I can fully craft my setup now. I'll make, I'll make the bank tag layout for day one. So I remove this. Actually, these will be, these will be extra items that I won't use immediately, but then we'll switch to. So all of this stuff down here is like extra. Our braces is a switch. Max Kate probably not needed. Eq keys down here. Up, up, uh, I need to put in Guardian Boots. I very much love crafting setups, so I have Armative Crossbow, Anguish, He Gloves, Guardian Boots, Shield, Ellie Switch. It'd be very funny if Ellie's pissed and I just lose all my money. On there, you had to TP out between kills to make it not use range overheads. Interesting. I don't think they'd do that to us. That's that's kind of mean if they did that. I think we'll be okay without it. Right, so that's my main switch. And then I want to have one into a Tebow. Angler, claws, that. Arrows. Where the heck are my arrows? There they are. Arrows, brute. I can't wait to just look back on this the day after and think that, yep, I got literally everything wrong. I got a rel I got a, I got a decent amount of ideas right for a uh, hard mode TAB. But then again, they were relatively obvious as well, some of them. That wasn't too crazy. Right, sand feud, get duplicated, mate. One of these. This is the best part of the entire thing. I just get the craft setup. My one tree love in the game. Sand few, divine divine. Two divines might be a bit overkill. It might be better to have a regular. I suspect anyway. Divine divine, some sweets. Oh, I should make a pre pot as well. I should make a pre pot. Roll book and then rune pouch. Okay, so the pre pot will be heart up here, angler as well. Three pots there, that's all fine. I don't think we need anything else. Um, this is optional, this is optional. Everything down here is optional. So, I guess I can put a buckler in as well. Also optional down here. Any other items we uh, thought would be good? Things like Infernal Cape, sure. Things like uh, Blood Fury, maybe. Put it down there. So in other words, in terms of the actual main gear, that's my main switch. 
I guess ruby bolts I can put in as well. Rubies go brr. I don't know if diamonds or rubies are better. Diamonds are obviously like fine, but rubies probably better. Tree pot go brr, and then it's just a straight up click everything once. Not too many sweets, and we're done. One seven. Beautiful. I am officially ready for next. What about Onyx Bolts for the healing? I don't think so. I, I think you can heal just fine with Bruise if you if you really need to heal. Onyx for Alking, yeah. Arceus Spellbook for summoning these bad boys. Can I even summon them at the G? I want to summon my Thrall. I'm a big fan of Thralls. Arceus for this bad boy. A 3.6 DPS. Excuse me, can I not summon at the GE? I'm so sad. Take me somewhere where I can summon. No, not there. There we go. I'm a gnome now. Yes. Thrall good. Go away, King Ballroom. There we go. Thrall good. He thrills give MVP? Unlikely. Unlikely. But, his, again, there's going to be 80 people in, in the room on first day. I don't think the play is to go for MVP. I think the play is to do, like, substantial DPS and get a feel for mechanics. This is, this is, a, this is a first entry setup. This is, a, this is a first entry setup. So, you know. But anyway, that's all I got. You bad person, Empire. Me and my greater Skelly Thrall. We're going to be doing some good things tomorrow. You think anything will cost max cash on release? Uh, item wise, so we're getting five pieces of bis, of which only four are like true bis. So three bits of Torva, one Van Braces that's going to be best for range, basically replacing B gloves, and then Zara at Crossbow, right? I'm willing to say that the Torva is going to be around one bill per piece on day of release, if not higher for some pieces. But because there are going to be so many people going for it, uh, by the end of the day, I reckon Torva will be 500 mil per piece. By the end of the day. Van Braces, probably 500 mil to begin with, and then going down to like 250 mil. I don't know. Pure speculation. I don't really know much about prices. You would insta buy it 500 per piece? There's going to be so many people out there going for it, though. There'll be so many people going for it. And you got to remember that, like, people aren't going to be doing... How do I put this? People, people who are farming the items don't need Torva. No, none of this setup includes Torva or Bandos. The only thing the upgrade we can get is actually the Bizarre Right Rambraces, right? Pretty much everyone in the game who is doing high-level stuff is going to be at Nex until they get enough GP. Which means everybody, including the people who are going to be using Torva for, like, TOB, are actually going to be doing Nex. No one's going to be buying it, because why would they? You'd have to have a ridiculous amount of GP to buy it. And there are people out there who will do it. I think Sparkback is offering 3 bill for the first piece of Torva. So, I mean, sure, the first few bits will go for a crazy amount, but it's not like the high-level community is doing Torva. Everyone will be doing Nex, so no one will be buying it. That's why I don't think it will be particularly high. Um, but that doesn't mean it will like go down below 500. It will probably stay at 500 and fluctuate between that and a build per piece over the next week or two. Pure guess. It's, it depends on drop rates as well. The money, the money could be incredible. It could be trash. It could be anything in between. But that's just my thought. What if you want to stand at GE? Yeah, but then if you stand at GE, you're not at next. If you're not at next for the next two weeks making GP, you fucked up. Inquis was two bill. Well, Inquis Inquisitor is ridiculously rare, which is the main reason why. So I mean, I, I don't think I don't think it'll be as rare to get Inquisitor. And also the Nightmare drop table. The drop table of Nightmare is like staff, three orbs, multiple pieces of Inquisitor, and mace. So the, the actual getting of Inquisitor set was really difficult. Whereas like Nex only has five drops. There's not as many drops, so it won't be worth as much because of that as well. Nightmare dead after three days. Well, there, yeah, that too. Next is probably going to be, uh... People understood that, like, the people who farmed Nightmare made a lot of GP. So nowadays, like, even me, even if I don't like the boss that much, I'm probably going to do a shit ton of it to make GP. 
I kind of realized that the guys who did Nightmare, they suffered for like six months, but they came out with like 20 billion GP. That's what I want to do. So. All this kind of adds up to make it... All, all this adds up to make me think that it's not going to be as much as we suspect it will. But it'll still be high and it'll still be, uh, you know, like 10 million an hour plus, if not more. So. I know a guy who did 1k Nightmare and lost a bill. Yeah, you have to do split groups. Oh, this is the last thing I wanted to cover, actually. If you're planning on going to next tomorrow, you need to find a reliable group of players who are doing it so you can make GP. Because if you're going there as one person amongst 80 people, you are not likely to get a drop. You're just not likely. I don't see it happening. You'd have to, you'd have to get so fucking lucky. I think, I think actually the drop is like an individual per person, so... I mean, maybe, but it's probably based on your, your damage as well. There'll be some MVP mechanic regardless. I'm not sure. It, that, actually, that actually depends a lot on... I think the loot system must scale. Nightmare itself won't scale, but the loot system must scale. Otherwise, you get so many drops. So... Everyone will get KC. Yes, you will. But uh, my recommendation is, if you plan on going to next long term, find a split group and basically just agree to, to split with them. So, for example, my split group, I don't know if I want to name names right now because it's pretty stacked, but my split group is 10 people right now. And this is a day of release content creator team. And then after that, I have another team, which consists of around not quite 20 people. So I have a day of release team for splits, and then I have a another team which is going to be doing next long term specifically for making GP. Um, but regardless, however you approach next, I would strongly suggest, strongly suggest making a team of five people plus five to ten people is like the sweet spot. So, Oti talked about team. Not sure if bait. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's bait as well. Tasty also leaked. Everyone leaking team. But he leaked. Fine, we leak team. Team is stacked, I have to say. I actually I I can't leak team because there's something else going on in my DMs that I can't show. It's very safe for work, but it's not safe for Twitch right now because it's gonna come out later. So I can't even show you, sorry. Anyway, team is like Cold One, myself, Witty King, the Boti, Rocket Chrissy, Star Arc, Resk, Tasty, Exact. So it's fucking stacked. But, um, I have one other person I might add to the team. You could also be incredibly poggers to see, but we'll see. But we're, there's 10 people in the Discord chat right now, and we need to, uh, what is this? You rat. There's 10 people in the team, so we may have to make a Discord thing. Wooks? I think Wooks is soloing. I, I'll be straight up, I don't have any, I don't, I don't suspect Wooks wants to join team. I think he's doing solo stuff for day one, and that's it. Uh, it's somebody else. But I have to actually talk to team. Tasty, you, I'll let you know. There you go, Tasty. Tasty, don't leak, I'll kill you. In game, in game. I'd be sick. I think we should get him in. I think we should get him in. Yeah. Secret safe? Okay, okay. Alright. Well, I got shit to do today. It's quite early, but I had a, I had other plans. So thank you for coming to my TED talk. I'm gonna put this up on YouTube. So if you missed some of the start or want like a recap, then feel free to look there. Again, this is all like predictions. Nothing here is like necessarily true. Well, most of it is not necessarily true. But this is my setup. This is what I'm using for the first kill on day one. Copy it if you like. Go with it if you want. Just don't blame me if it all goes to shit. That's all. And most importantly, buy my buy my special spirit shits, please. That's all. So, uh, yeah, I won't be live until tomorrow, so good luck, everyone. I guess I'll see you there for the next release. I'll probably be on a little bit early. I might do some more. I might do some more gauntlet just for the sake of it. But um, I'll be on around like 9.30 to 10. So. That's the plan. Right. I have things to do. We must find a person to raid.
I think we can raid a whale today. I'm live quite early and more importantly raiding. Is Chrissy's live? It's too late. I've already I've already uh I've already gone for whale. Anyway, the recap will be live in like 30 minutes to one hour. I have to render it and stuff and add like some some a nicer, nicer music so it doesn't get copyrighted, but Regardless, thanks for tuning in. Good luck everyone tomorrow. Let's make some money, guys. Mm. Lots and lots and lots of money. Preferably more for me, though. Go back to the G. I can show off my spirituals one more time. I do think the price of them will go up to 250 if they're bis and they have a genuine use. We were talking about this a lot yesterday, but I reckon 250 isn't crazy. 250 isn't crazy. Can't end yet? I can absolutely end yet. I got stuff to do. Anyway, buy my items. They will be very good. And again, my money is kind of where my mouth is, so... Yeah. You're at 499? Sorry, bro. Alright, see you later, guys.